momentum. Coming off the devastating knockout. Now we're set. Let's send it over to Jimmy Lennon Jr. At Park MGM here in Las Vegas, Nevada, Premier Boxing Champions presents our next attraction in the ring. Brought to you by TGB Promotions in association with Kings Promotions and Showtime. This bow is sanctioned by the NABO supervisor, Gino Rodriguez. Introducing our judges, scoring from ringside, from Nevada, Eric Cheek. From California, Max DeLuca. And from Nevada, Patricia Morse Jarman. Introducing our referee in charge to give instructions after our introductions, Celestino Ruiz. All right, fans, here we go with the co-main event of the evening. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled for the NABO Super Bantamweight Championship. Introducing to you first, on my left, he is fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with red and green trim, fighting out of Mexicali, Baja California, Mexico. He weighed in at 121 and one half pounds with a record of 20 wins, one loss and two draws. He has seven wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the world ranked contender tonight making his Showtime debut. Introducing Eduardo El Gemelo Baez. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner in this 10 round title attraction. Entering the ring wearing red trunks with gold trim, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada by way of Muskegon, Michigan. He weighed in at 121 and three quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 18 wins, no losses, 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the hard hitting rising star, the WBA number one world ranked super bantamweight contender, introducing the undefeated Raiz, the Beast Ali. Give instructions once again, Celestino Ruiz. You're good here. Te di los instrucciones en el camerino que una pelea limpia y protejas de siempre. Gentlemen, I gave you guys your instruction in just room. I expect a clean, a fair fight, start to finish. Touch up, good luck. Super bantamweight bout, ten rounds. Eduardo Baez, Raiz. Aleem. Here we go. Once again, we want to thank fight fans all around the world. If you're just joining us here at the Dolby Live Theater at Park MGM in Las Vegas, Nevada, I'm Miguel Flores, premier boxing champions, bringing you tonight's action as Aleem comes out at the red and gold trunks. Baez. Sporting the Mexican colors, white, red, and green. And Aline. Left hook just missed. Bias. Looking to establish the jab. Overhand hook just missed. And there's a big body shot from Aline. And when Aline throws, I mean, he throws with violent intent. You saw that against Pasillas back in January of this year. There's several knockdowns throughout that fight. There's another overhand right. He was able to catch Bias coming in on the left hook. And like I said, Aleem is looking to make a statement and put everyone on notice to all the other contenders and champions in the Super Bantamweight division. There's a body shot right there from Aleem. There's a jab from Aleem. Bias trying to feel his way out. There's a right cross connecting for Baez. Didn't phase Aleem. Yes. 
That's a good body shot followed with the left hook upstairs for Baez. And Aleem not too keen on that, trying to answer. And there's another body shot from Baez. Moves overhand right, partially blocked, uppercut as Aleem tried to time that up. There's another one, two from Aleem. There's a big left hook, and you almost saw the legs buckle from Baez. But Baez hit it well, and then Aleem tries to follow it up with a straight right, and then he goes to the body as Baez tries to answer with an overhand right. There you see Eduardo Baez getting instructions from his trainer, Rogelio Franco, as we begin round two. And there you see Aleem immediately starting with the jab. There's an overhand right, and then Aleem trying to go down into the body. And there's a big left hook from Aleem. As he's trying to go downstairs now. And there was a shot, it looked like it was behind the head of Baez. I'm sure it was unintentional from Aleem. And there's an uppercut that Aleem trying to time up. There's another body shot, overhand right, but Baez was able to counter with a looping left. Aleem rushes forward with the jab, followed with a couple of body shots. There's an overhand right just missing for Aleem. There's Baez with the overhand right. You can see both guys still trying to get their timing down. And there's a big left again. And then Aleem. You can see Aleem really sits on his punches and really, I mean, he tries to, there's a Baez was able to hit the overhand right, but Aleem goes downstairs, trying to follow it up with a straight right. But Aleem really trying to sit on his punches to get all the power he can behind those. But so far, Bias is stood in front of Aleem, taking a couple of shots, and there's another overhand right by Bias. There's a left hook connecting and then a link going downstairs and now Baez looks at Celestino Ruiz saying that one was low. But it seems to be okay. And there's a big overhand right connecting on the chin for Baez. And Aleem's got to be careful. Tremendous shot from Baez in this round appeared to have been a 
all Aleem until that shot. Was it enough to steal the round? Who knows, but that was an excellent overhand right from Baez. So you hit him right on the nose. Thought it was a little bit more on the chin, but you take a look again. That was right on the left eye slash nose. But excellent, excellent shot from Baez. I think it surprised the Lima bit. Let's keep the punches up. Sube ese cuerpo, okay? So you see what he got? That's all he got. Hold on, hold on. All right, run up. Okay, time to sell up. Good. All right, time to sell up. Let's go. Both fighters look calm, cool, and collected as we begin round three. And there's a lean trying to go downstairs. I expect the action to turn up a bit over the next couple of rounds. There's a left jab right there from a lean. Lean is throwing a lot of power shots thus far. And over and right just missing, but by his counter. And there's an overhand right. And there's a body shot. Tremendous shot from Baez. She's starting to land. Liam's got to be careful. As Liam now tries to go to the body. And there's another overhand right. Scoring for Baez. Now Aline tries to go to the body. And like we were saying, I mean, you can't underestimate a guy like Eduardo Baez. Especially if you're a Lean and you thought you were going to fight a former champion in Roman. You wanted a champion, someone of the upper echelon of the Super Vans weight division, as you see, a Lean. Beautiful combination, finishing off with the left hook. And then there's a big uppercut connecting for Aline, knocking Baez back. But Baez resets and ready to engage. Aline trying to wear down Baez to the body. Aleem backs Baez up. Another overhand right connecting for Baez. And that's been a favorable punch for Baez thus far. There's a big jumping left from Aleem as he was able to go to the body. And there's a uppercut followed with a right hook from Aleem. And then a left hook. I think that was partially blocked, but it's still connected. There's a jab as Aleem backs away. Now going to the body and then a, another left sort of backs by his up. And that is the end of round three. You start to see it turn up a bit. And there is that overhand right from Baez on the chin. Didn't have too much behind it. And here's Aleem getting through the defense of Baez. Watch him and then there is the short left on the chin backing Baez up. Here we see kind of the jumping left from Aleem. And there is a big uppercut. That was the shot of the round that really backed Baez up. It was just a beautiful punch from Aleem. And that was a huge uppercut. But give credit to Baez. He took it 
And then reset and was ready to keep it going. And into round four. No punch, no punch, no, no, no. I got it, I got it. Box. Baez has shown a really good chin so far. I'm not sure if that's a wise move to keep on testing it, though, as Aline was able to connect with the right hand. Aline can wear you down, and he's got the power to put you away. Another body shot from Aline. Left hook missed. Aline a little bit wild right now. Just a good body shot from Baez. So he was able to get Aline coming in. There's a body shot from Baez. Now Aline tries to go to the body. And straight left, and now Aline stalks Baez down. Missed with a big left. You can tell Aline at times he's really looking for that knockout. But he can't overextend himself. That leaves him open where Bias has been able to connect on a couple of opportunities. And there you see it. big right connected for Bias. Right on the button. And then there's a left from Bias. Backing Aline up. Aleem's taking it, and he's looking to deliver a shot of his own now. And he switches southpaw, no, no, and he no comes punch, forward. No Turn around. Box. Don't see Aleem go southpaw too often, and there's a big right. And there's another left hook. That was the same left hook that connected earlier, and now a left hook of Aleem's. And Aleem trying to go with the uppercut. And a big overhand right Watch your head. again for Baez. Watch your head. Put that going like this. Nim has got to be careful. And there's a right hook for Baez as Aline comes forward. There's a body shot as Aline really tries to dig in. And Baez missed with an overhand right attempt as we end the round. We see the trainer, Bobby McRoy Jr. Come in, Danny Davis. You're giving him, you're giving him his offense. Take it away from him. Low stance or wide stance, stay close. But every time you put out on the outside, he's going to here we go, round five. Do you see Aline looking to use the jab? Aline's got to be careful not to rely on a knockout. And then again, an overhand right. It's connected several times for Baez. Left hook just missing as the bias with the wild left. And he was able to counter. A 
Baez stalks Aleem and then a chopping left connected for Baez. Now Aleem trying to go to the body. Switches southpaw. And overhead left just missed. But Aleem was able to get into the body. And there's a big left. Baez connected with the straight right, followed with that. And there's a big uppercut on Baez. Aleem has got to be careful. The chin is being tested tonight. He is leaving himself open a little bit too much as he continues to try to go for the knockout. There's a short right connecting for Aleem. But Baez has been a gamer. No, 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 no. Now Aleem goes to the body and then connects upstairs. Baez, the big looping left, but that was blocked. But a straight right connected for Aleem. There's a straight left for Aleem. Round five comes to a close. Good round for Baez. As Aleem gets a warning from referee Celestino Ruiz. So watch the back of the head as round five ends. You gotta get back on your defense, bro. Defense first. Don't go behind the jab. Get to the stop. Stop the switching. There's no need to switch. Get your legs out. There's no need to switch. There's no need to switch. Get behind the jab. Take a look at some of the highlights from round five. As we see some of the big shots Bios was able to land in that round. There's a big left and then followed it up, timed perfectly with the straight right. But Aleem took it. But again, he is leaving himself open just a bit too much. Here you see his corner, Bobby McCoy Jr. Letting Aleem know, you know, he doesn't like him switching stances too much. Said it's happening. And maybe that is a cause for why Bias has been able to score and connect at a higher clip. There's another overhand right. And we see Aline comes out orthodox again. Stop, stop. Don't spin him around like that. Bias was able to get inside with that right. And a big overhand right again, but just missed as Lean was just out of range. And there's a short left. This is a big fight for Aline. As Bias was able to watch your head. Connect. But it is a big fight for Aline. If you want a title opportunity, that will go away if he be gets a loss to Bias here. He needs to keep that momentum going. Bias is not making it easy, and there's a big right for Bias. Again, timed perfectly. And Bias continues to step forward. Time. Referee Celestino Ruiz called time. Time in, time in. Box. I believe there was an accidental headbutt. Here we go. And now we're starting to see a lot of blood come from the forehead of Baez, and I believe that was from the headbutt as Aline goes upstairs, and then he goes down with a body shot. 
Baez just missed on the overhand right. There you see the blood right over the right forehand. Oh, Baez and Aulin really starting to dig into the body. Stop, stop. Box. Aulin just missed as he darts forward and then follows it up with the straight left. Stop, 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 stop. stop. And then uh, Baez just went a little bit too low, but Aleem not affected. As Aleem again continues to jump forward. Watch your head, watch your head. There's a good body shot as Brown ended it there. You can see the cut. And we take a look and believe that's well, where the cut accidental. occurred. You see the clash of heads with Aleem and Baez. Yep, there's no cut. And then there is a cut right after the headbutt. So it was not caused by a punch. And it's something to monitor throughout the rest of the fight because that definitely looks like a pretty nasty cut. And it is. It certainly is. I mean, that one, that is open pretty significantly. We'll see if Aleem tries to attack as we enter round seven. Baez has fought well. There's a good body shot from Aleem. He just missed. And Aleem, again, peppering the body. There's a straight jab from Aleem. Overhand hook just missed. And then a straight right by Aleem. As Baez out of the reach for Aleem. Good jab from Baez. And, and Aleem, again, staying active, busy. But it has not been an easy fight for him. He's been tagged with a couple of big shots from Baez. But Aleem, again, hasn't seemed to have been stunned by any. He's taken all of them. And he's now starting to impose his will, going to the body of Baez. I'm curious if the cut had anything to do with it. Might have made things a little bit more difficult for Baez. He's starting to see the blood trickle down. Not sure if it's impeding the vision at all of Baez. Stop. Box. And there's a big right again for Baez, and that, that's that been his punch. But Aleem continues to come forward. I mean, Baez does only have seven knockouts of his 20 victories. Now Aline really starting to focus more in on the body no punch, no punch. in the second half of this fight. And there's a good body shot from Aline as he presses the action. There's 
the right cross as the round seven comes to a close. Our main event still to come. Super Bantamweight World Title Unification Bout. Cool boy Steph, Stephen Fulton Jr., the WBO champion. And there you see the heartbreaker, Brandon Figueroa, the WBC champion. Champion versus champion. Figueroa, 24 years old, Fulton, 27. We'll take a look at Fulton's last five fights. Defeated Angelo Leo to become the WBO champion. And Isaac Avilar, knockout. And then you look at Figueroa, he defeated Luis Neri with a seventh round knockout back in May to become the WBC champion. Defeated Damian Vasquez. His only draw against Julio Ceja. That is still to come. But first, taking care of business. Final three rounds as we enter the final third of the fight. Aline has started to seem to grab control. I think Baez has had the overhand right hand, but not much else as the fight has progressed. But again, he's been a difficult opponent so far. And he is still coming forward. Good body shot from Aline. And I think the body, going to the body has been a wise move for Aline. Really taking the wind out of the sails for Baez. And there is a right cross counter for Aleem. Trying to find an opening. Bias has had a good chin because Leem's got some serious power. I think Leem realized early it was going to be very difficult to knock Bias out. Now you're starting to see Leem not sit on his punches as much and really trying to box Baez. Don't punch, don't punch. Stop, stop. Box. There's good chopping right for Baez. Now Baez going to the body with the left hook. And that is backing Aleem up, and now Baez has Aleem on the ropes. Aleem able to reestablish. He goes southpaw now. Now he switches back. There's a left hook by Aleem. Baez has stayed in the pocket. Stop, stop. Box. And there's a right, right hand just blocked from Aleem. There's a left hook, partially blocked again. As round eight in the books. Live from the Dolby Live Theater at the Park MGM Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Final two rounds here. 
Rogelio Franco, the trainer of Baez. He's the trainer and cut, man. Done an excellent job so far on that cut since it's been opened up. And that was a good left hook from Aline. Now straight right, followed with the left hook. And now, Aline backs away. Digging into the body. Now you get the jumping uppercut. He blocked a lot of those shots. He was able to counter with a left hook. And he misses with a big left. Now Bias trying to counter. And again, Bias is chasing Ali to the corner as he digs into the body himself. And Lee with the right cross, overhand left again as he switches back to southpaw. And there's a big right that stunned Baez. His knees buckled. Let's see if Faleem is able to press the action now. Baez is hurt. And Aline timed that one perfectly as Baez is able to back Aleem off him with that straight right. There was a big right, I think, connected for Baez. Not sure if Aleem connected with his. Pick him up, pick him up, Aleem pick him up. Digs into the body. Don't lean on him. Now Aleem trying to pick his shots. And really starting to load up. There's a short right hook for Elaine. Watch your head, guys. Another Watch your head. one. Now Baez was able to counter with a beautiful one two on Elim. Don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. Box. Watch your head, watch your head. There's a body shot as Aleem again continues to rip into the body. And a short right hook. And that followed with a big uppercut from Aleem. And now he tries to sit on that left hand. As Baez backs up. Don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. Box. Another body shot again from Aleem. Oh, but Baez staying in the pocket. Entertaining ninth round. Here's some of the action from that ninth round. And then there was the quick right cross that really buckled Baez. You see Baez missed with the left hook. Aleem, a little jab, and then as Baez was coming in, he, he connected with the short right, but that Last round. didn't have as much power as Aleem's right had, backing Baez up. And you see both men through a right, and that was a good right that connected for Baez. And there you see that one on the chin for Aleem. And here is the 10th and final round. Aleem and Baez. Stop. Baez has been as tough an opponent as we thought he would be. And Aleem has had his hands full. And there's a good right from Baez as he backs Aleem into the ropes. And Aleem in southpaw stance again. And there was another, I believe that was a headbutt. And you see Baez, that one affected him. And you see referee Celestino Ruiz giving Baez some time. 
Letting Look, the judges know that was an accidental headbutt. Reese asked him, you want more time to recover? And Baez is ready to get back after it. And here we go. And now Aleem really trying to load up on his punches again. And there's a quick left. And Aleem thrown down to the ground by Baez. No knockdown. He's really starting to get rough in the trenches for both men. And now Aleem swipes with a quick left cross against Baez. And there's a big right again. That overhand right again has been there. Now Baez starting to press forward and he's connecting on the chin. I'm not sure if Aleem is stunned, but he is throwing. In the corner imploring Baez to press forward, but Aleem digging into the body, right hook upstairs. And now, again, Aleem tripped by Baez. Yeah. And there's a big straight left. Baez might have stunned Aleem. He cocked Aleem's head all, all the way back. And now, Baez trying to get in the action. But Aleem is still there, and he is throwing wildly. 40 seconds left. Baez starting to let his hands go. Aleem's knees buckle. Does he have enough to finish this? Aleem, a warrior. Baez, giving everything he's got. Final 10. Aleem emptying the gas tank. Baez, the big overhand right just missed. Aleem looping left just missed. A short left by Baez connected and that's the end of the fight. Standing ovation here from the Dolby Live Theater. Another barn burner in our co-main. Here we take a look at the action. First, there was that headbutt. And that one, as we were saying, seemed to have affected Baez just a bit. And then there is a short left from Baez that connected. And then there you see, there is Baez kind of throwing Aleem down to the ground as he lost his balance tripping over Baez. But Baez landed some thunderous shots. There you saw that straight left jab from Baez. And that was the straight left that you see the, the right knee almost buckled for a lean. His head knocked back. I'm not sure if he was switching stances, but he certainly got tagged with that one. And that was An exciting closing round in this 122 pound co-main event. Again, Aleem undefeated and was favored, but he had to empty the tank against Baez, who proved to be a worthy opponent as he had a tremendous showing in this one. And Baez connected on several big overhand rights as we take a look at that cut caused by a headbutt earlier in the fight. But credit, like I said, to Rogelio Franco, the trainer and cutman, as we go to Ladies Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. Here are score totals. Judge of ringside, Max DeLuca scores the action 95 to 95, even a draw. Overruled by judges, Patricia Morse Jarman, who scores the action 96 to 94. Eric Cheek sees it 98 to 92 in favor of the winner by majority decision. He is now the NABO champion.
and still undefeated Rice, the Beast Ali. Majority decision for Raiz, the Beast Aline. Not sure if I agree with Eric Cheek's scorecard of 98-92. Felt the fight was just a tad closer than that as we go to Jim Gray. Tough, tough Mexican fighter, but I got the job done. I want the winner of Bolton Figueroa, 100%. I got this. They can't fuck with me. How would, how would you assess this fight? He was, he was a tough opponent. Tough opponent. I'm coming off like a year layoff. I was a little bit rusty, but I still got the job done. I wanted to stop him, but he was tough. He kept bringing it, but I did what I had to do. What did you learn tonight about yourself, and what do you need to have more to become a champion? I'm a, I'm a fucking dog. You know, uh, I grinded it out. I turned southpaw. I was throwing hard punches. I got caught with some shots, but I hung in there. You know, uh, I can beat the best of them. And I don't care if it's Fulton, I don't care if it's Figueroa. When, I, when they step in the ring with me, I'm gonna win. We look forward to that, should that happen. Congratulations. Thank you, I appreciate it. Keep on following me, because the climb to the top is fucking real. There you have it. All right, Moro, back to you. Raise the beast to leave. As we take a look at some of the highlights from this fight, as you heard him, I mean, he said he is a dog and he proved it against what he called a very tough Baez, who was certainly not easy. There was a big uppercut that connected, but Baez took Aleem's best shots throughout this fight and just kept coming forward. He was a true Mexican warrior. And then there was that short right that connected, buckling. Both men were buckled throughout this fight. As you saw Baez with a shot buckled. And then backing away. That was one of Aleem's best punches of the night. And what a fun closing 10 rounds. There is a big straight jab that knocked Aleem back a bit. And there you see him and his reaction. Reese the Beast Aleem, undefeated still, and improves to 19-0 with a majority decision victory over Eduardo Baez.